I titled today's mind map, Self-Image Embodiment, Momentum. One of the things that I wanted to reflect upon was the video that I released on Thursday last week, in which we discussed aiming from the heart, being one with your vision. This can also be looked at as self-image embodiment, one with the vision. Decisions become automatic. Inner conversations, as we discussed in Sunday's video, are automatic. We're thinking from the vision. Now, two books that I reviewed today, which I like to review on a regular basis. Number one being Transurfing in 78 Days by Vadim Zeland. And number two, In Tune with the Infinite by Ralph Waldo Trine brought forth some insights to discuss today and related over to the concept of momentum, which is really embodying the self-image that is in harmony with the vision. This is the process of momentum. Every day we show up and we do the things. We know what we have to do. And day by day we commit. And as long as we listen to the soul, what we find is we automatically know what to do. We build a connection with ourselves and maintain the ideal self-image that's one with the vision and release from any kind of overthinking that seems to create unnecessary convolution and confusion in the mind. So Vadim Zeland says, Every time you have to make a decision, listen first to the voice of reason and then listen to the feeling in your soul. As soon as the mind has made a decision, the soul will respond either positively or negatively. And this is very interesting. One of the things that I like to do is if somebody suggests something to me, I know that there's a part of me that may want to do that thing or go in that direction. What I want to do is I want to ascend past any kind of persuasion and I want to ask myself, Is this in harmony and is this in contribution to what I really desire to experience in my life? What the soul wants? And the answer is always received within, as he goes on to state, In the case of the latter, you will experience a small wave of something, a sneaking suspicion in your soul. When you made the decision, you will have experienced the briefest inkling of something. At that moment, though, the mind will have been so absorbed in its analysis that it would not have bothered about your feelings. Now, though, remember, what was that initial fleeting feeling? If it was a sinking feeling on the background of optimistic reasoning, the soul clearly said no. If your soul is saying no and your mind is saying yes, boldly refuse if you can. The soul always knows exactly what she wants. There is one simple, reliable algorithm for determining a heartfelt no. If you have to convince yourself and persuade yourself to say yes, then the soul is really saying no. Remember, when your soul does say yes to something, you won't have to persuade yourself. Now this is very powerful because we speak of the concept of self-persuasion a lot. We discuss the importance of being self-persuaded to the vision. So now that we go a little deeper into this, we recognize that The self-persuasion is actually in harmony with the soul in our conversation from the ideal state of mind that's one with the vision. If we try to convince ourselves in a way that goes against what the soul is saying, then what happens is we are disconnecting from this very important relationship that will allow us to move towards our vision from a place of flow. I always suggest this. Make flow a priority. And in this regard, we make flow a priority 
by committing to listening to this voice. Now, when I reflect back on my experiences, I recognize that this for me has been an ongoing journey. One of the things that happened in the earlier stages of my journey was I would allow the opinions or suggestions to cloud my connection with the soul indicating whether it's a yes or whether it is a no in relation to whatever shows up. And this brought forth a feeling of disconnect within myself and indecisiveness and procrastination. As I started to work with the information that I shared a number of videos ago, which I'll put a link in the description to, being your own best friend, this inner voice connection, this relationship to the heart and soul was brought forth to a higher degree. And then what I found myself doing was automatically listening to it. It was easier for me to distinguish, take a step back and listen to that true inner voice that was saying to me, move forward with this deal or don't move forward with it. When I listened to it, what I noticed was that things would play out in harmony. I would actually find opportunities, and I would use this in the space of entrepreneurship, use this in the space of relationships, and in all areas of my life, I would find that I would experience more flow as well as self-confidence would go up, and the ideal inner conversation, the ideal inner dialogue would play out, which would relate over to the vision. And one of the things that I really like to do was share it in my videos, such as what I do at the end of the videos when I share those affirmations. Because those were the inner dialogues and conversations that I was having with myself as a result of listening to what the soul was saying. The inner conversation, the ideal conversation that we spoke of in the last video is thinking from the vision. And the vision was selected based on what the heart desire. And so they're in harmony. The soul desires this to be experienced through you. And what happens is the conversation, the inner dialogue is one of harmony. And one of the things that I like to do is write down those harmonious connections, conversations, and share it with others. What I find in consulting and leadership is people show up and for some reason they seem to have lost this connection, and I understand. And one of our goals as leaders is to help them connect back to this conversation that is occurring within themselves. And this conversation helps them realize what is a yes and what is a no, which makes decision-making easy. And so when I take my own notes from my own experiences and share it with others, something interesting happens. They start to connect back to this inner voice. They start to reestablish this relationship, which was always there. But for some reason, we let the opinions and suggestions from whatever source cloud this. And one of the aspects of building this momentum and further embodying the self-image is to further this connection and relationship with ourselves. Now, Ralph Waldo Trine starts to distinguish things in a way that is going to contribute to our conversation. And my trust is that it'll contribute to this relationship with yourself. It will help you distinguish if the soul is saying yes or no in relation to whatever shows up on the journey. And it will also give you the confidence to trust yourself and listen to yourself in relation to those inspirations that are received within so that you can bring forth what you desire more from a place of flow, harmony, and bliss. Speaking about harmony, he speaks about it We'll talk about that in a moment. He says, Everything is first worked out in the unseen before it is manifested in the seen. In the ideal, 
before it is realized in the real, in the spiritual before it shows forth in the material. The realm of the unseen is the realm of cause. The realm of the seen is the realm of effect. The nature of effect is always determined and conditioned by the nature of its cause. So we want to trust the soul to guide us to the destination with thoughts of harmony in relation to our vision, thus become the causative factors on the pathway we go down in this reality. From all the infinite potentiality that we can experience, what we want is the accurate flow-based journey to the destination. And this is found within, in the realm of cause. So what is in the realm of cause? Well, he says here, the word heaven means harmony. The word hell is from an old English, hell, meaning to build a wall around, to separate. To be held was to be shut off from. If there is such thing as harmony, there must be that something one can be in right relations with. For to be in right relations with anything is to be in harmony with it. So it's the recognition that we are shutting ourselves off from the harmony that exists within us through this connection with the soul, which is guiding us to the destination. So he goes on to say, There is the soul life direct from God. This it is that relates us to the infinite. There is then the physical life. This is that relates us to the material universe about us. The thought life connects the one with the other. Very important. The thought life connects the one with the other. And what we want to receive within is the accurate inner interpretations from what he refers to as the soul life. Because that information is forming the connections between the different experiences that we have each day and relating it over to our vision. Some way, somehow, I always say, we're going to bring forth what we desire. And what we want to do is have this momentum of embodying the self-image every day. And this is done by listening to this inner voice or these inclinations and making it a priority. He says the law is continually operating whether we are conscious of it or not. We are all living, so to speak, in a vast ocean of thought. And the very atmosphere around us is continually filled with the thought forces that are being continually sent or that are continually going out in the form of thought waves. We are all affected, more or less, by these thought forces, either consciously or unconsciously. And in the degree that we are more or less sensitively organized, or in the degree that we are negative and so are open to outside influences rather than positive, thus determining what influences shall enter into our realm of thought and hence into our lives. A lot of times we call this clear thinking, focusing on what is in harmony and in contribution to your vision and doing it more automatically every day. Now, this is some nuanced stuff that we're referring to, which is why we're getting into this now after a number of discussions that we've been having in relation to inner conversations, inner voice, listening to yourself, building a relationship with yourself. But now it's important that we integrate this to a higher degree and practice this. And one of the greatest practices that I've had in my life was to observe based on whatever information that was presented to me in whatever shape or form, 
beyond the opinions and suggestions of the information, to go beyond it and ask myself, what does the soul believe about this? What is really true? What is the heartfelt decision in relation to either moving forward with this information or not? And what you'll find is you'll start to listen to this voice. It's there. Or inclination. I happen to be very auditory, so I tend to receive voices. Some might receive hunches, visions, sensations. It's important to tune into this because that is suggesting whether it's a yes or a no. Well, what I found as a result of committing to this, I started to experience more flow each day. Even the decision of what to discuss in these videos that I release on Thursdays and on Sundays, which we've been doing this now since Thursdays and Sundays since 2019, is based on inspiration within. The soul guides this discussion. And it shows up in the moment. A lot of times I have no idea what I'm going to talk about until all of a sudden I get some hunches and inspirations to go and look at some different books and ponder upon a certain topic. And then I just allow myself to put it all together into a mind map, hit the record button, and start the conversation. And then allow the inspiration to express. Now, for me, this is very rewarding because I know that not only do I get to share this information and many benefit from it, but I also further bring forth my self-image, which I see myself at the end, who can communicate very effectively and precisely during consulting, during leadership opportunities. And this is something that I see that I can get better at each day. So this practice of doing these videos and having these conversations has become automatic. We call this deep state of flow autotelic. Watch the video I did on flow last week and the other videos that I did. Put a link in the description. When one gets deep into this connection with the soul, they automatically know what to do and what not to do. And as they continue to build this relationship with themselves, they'll notice that indecision seems to taper away. We all of a sudden seem decisive, self-confident. This is a result of the embodiment of how you're really meant to be. Self-actualization. We look at self-realization as realizing ourselves, building this internal relationship and understanding ourselves, the inner world, to higher degrees. And we call the expression of that the self-actualization, the embodiment of. And that's what we're looking to do. And so again, let's uh, reflect back on this quote here as we bring this conversation into a conclusion. He says, every time you have to make a decision Listen first to the voice of reason, and then listen to the feeling in your soul. As soon as the mind has made a decision, the soul will respond, either positively or negatively. In the case of the latter, you will experience a small wave of something, a sneaking suspicion in your soul. When you made the decision, you will have experienced the briefest inkling of something. At that moment, though, the mind will have been so absorbed in its analysis that it would not have bothered about your feelings. Now they'll remember, what was the initial fleeting feeling? If it was a sinking feeling on the background of optimistic reasoning, the soul clearly said no. If your soul is saying no and your mind is saying yes, boldly refuse if you can. The soul always knows exactly what she wants. There is one simple, reliable algorithm for determining a heartfelt no. 
If you have to convince yourself and persuade yourself to say yes, then the soul is really saying no. Remember, when your soul does say yes to something, you won't have to persuade yourself. Now let's relate this back over to our conversation we had on Sunday, in which we talked about inner conversations from the premise of the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Notice how the inner conversations flow. So we get into dialogue. We have these kinds of discussions through these videos. Or maybe you meet with a friend or someone that we would call a mastermind. And these conversations bring you back into this connection within. And all of a sudden, you know what to do, what to say. And we want to maintain that because that's how we embody the self-image that's one with the vision. And what I like to do is write down these expressions, take a note of them. Because every now and then you could read them again to bring yourself back into that state of mind. There are certain audio programs, like one, for example, The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. I like to listen to it regularly. I also like to listen to As Man Thinketh, audiobook format, regularly. Because those are the words that James Allen and Earl Nightingale spoke from their soul. And they expressed it. And as you listen to it, it stimulates this connection within ourselves. And it brings me back into it. So I recommend thus making a commitment to embody the self-image as one with the vision through keen observation and reflection on this guidance from within and honoring this guidance from within, thus building a further relationship with this guidance from within. And see what happens. Because from my journey, and many that I spoke with that work with this concept here, they found that not only were they being able to bring forth what they desire, but they were able to do it in a way where they were able to maintain that flow, the ideal state of mind. Because what's really happening is they were embodying, they were becoming the person that's one with the vision. They were actualizing the ideal. So let's go ahead and conclude this with an affirmation to further remind us of this connection that we have. We can say, I realize that I'm guided from within to realize my vision. The inner voice, the inner connection, the hunches and inspirations become more apparent on the day-to-day -day journey. As a result, I listen to these insights. I act upon these insights and ideas and see them all the way till completion. In the process, I realize success and build a further relationship with myself, thus connecting me to a higher degree of self-confidence, which brings me into the world of harmony. I realize that harmony is found within via the inner relationship with my soul, I'm able to distinguish between the thoughts and identify with the thoughts that are in harmony with the vision. As a result, I maintain a state of being that's one with my vision. I realize that there is a soul life. I recognize that there is a physical life and that the thought life connects the one with the other. Thus, I further encourage the thoughts that are in harmony with my vision that are received within via the hunches and inspirations from my soul to bring forth my vision from a place of harmony and flow. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.